abundance on our property can be, and our food security can be seriously impacted uh, by hail. It's, it's a very destructive force in our area when it comes to especially our annual systems because they've got much more tender leaves than our perennial systems. And so we can, I remember in horror years ago watching my entire garden middle of July, big hailstorm coming out and I wa had to watch helplessly from my kitchen window while everything in my garden was completely and utterly shredded to smithereens. Even the carrots, the carrot tops were completely shredded. They were just the tops of the carrots sticking up out of the ground and shredded leaves all the way around. I had tomato plants that were already about three and a half feet, four feet tall. All that was left of them. The tomatoes were still on the vines. <laughs> they were still on the vines, but all the leaves were shredded. So the little tomatoes were hanging on there. They were pitted from the hail, but all the leaves were gone. Everything in the garden was shredded. Even some of the leaves on the trees were completely, they were, it, was, they, it was a new tree. And I thought, oh my goodness, it was just devastating. It was heart wrenching because everything, it looked like everything was gone. But then I thought, well, wait a minute, Kevin, you know how resilient natural systems are and you've done everything you can to create all of this resiliency on your property. Why not just wait and see what happens? So that's what I did. And I, I'm not lying, about 90% of my garden came back, even the tomatoes. You would have thought that it was all over, but the crying, but I tell you, those tomatoes all came back. All the, they grew new leaves. Yes, I still had pitted tomatoes, uh, but, the, but everything came back. Even the carrots all grew new tops. It was phenomenal. So it really showed me the resilience of our systems when, when, we, when we get everything else right. So, so, you know, for years afterwards, every time we'd see dark clouds in the sky that time of year, you know, if we were away from the house, it's like, let's get home right away. We've got to cover everything. You know, we have to get home. And every cloud became, you know, a suspicious cloud, right? So we were looking at clouds with suspicion. And I thought, wait a minute, summer is our beautiful time to be enjoying life. Why are we, uh, you know, devoting so much of our energy to being afraid of hail? We've got to come up with some strategies. So we did. We started to, to mess around with some strategies that actually worked. And, uh, and so uh, we had to focus those on where our production was the highest. And that was really for us, it was our annual system. And that's something in our climate, um, because we're not in a tropical climate, we don't have such a heavy reliance on fruit. So our, our perennial systems were not as, um, I mean, they're incredibly productive, but, th but for us to make sure we get through the winter where we live, uh, to create that food security piece, we needed to be growing the types of vegetables that we could store over winter or process in some way to keep us fed during the winter. So a lot of caloric intake in those. So, so our annual systems were the areas in which we wanted to focus our hail protection. So those were these areas here, 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 and here. We have a few annuals in here now too. So I'm gonna show you some of those. So here's hail, you know, these are probably um, dime size hail or so, but we'll often get golf ball size hail. So it can be really, really devastating. And it typically happens when everything is really in full swing. So this is a strategy that we employed uh, the first year. So these are basically these wire mesh panels. This isn't such a great example because these are really close together but we have uh, 10 foot long by 40 inch wide beds in our, in our garden, our main garden. So what we did is we bought these panels from the, from the hardware store that we could pressure fit inside the edge of our beds. And so what we did is we put two per bed. Now this is a little bit better of example here. We've got one going across here and one going across here. So they're just pressure fit in there. And then we got an insect netting and we cut it about four feet wide and we laid it just across the top. Now these mesh panels are, have about six inch, uh, six inch uh, holes. So you can still reach your hand in, you can still manipulate, you can still harvest, no problem. Still water if you need to, no, not an issue. 
Um, and so what this allows us to do is protect from hail. The water still falls through when it rains, but there's good air circulation. We don't wanna be closing everything off because we wanna maintain that air circulation. So especially after it hails here, it becomes very humid, which is unusual for Alberta, but um, we don't mind it. Uh, and so this system worked so well. Now, if you don't have raised beds, you can still use the system. We've devised a number of ways, either with chains on the bottom to connect them together so that they can be freestanding or simply by bending them into sort of a house shape. Now they become a freestanding unit that you can put on your garden beds. But this was so, so, so effective. And so then we thought, well, wait a minute, we grow a lot of vertical crops as well. How would we do this for our vertical crops? So, uh, you know, the vertical growing is something, a strategy that we like to demonstrate. We like to use it. Number one, I don't like bending over that much anymore. I'm in my mid sixties. I, my back just does not like to pick bush beans, but pole beans, no problem. I'll get up on a ladder any day. Um, and tall varieties of peas and, and our tall indeterminate tomatoes and corn and things like that. So, how we do it for those guys. So, so we, we took that same strategy. Here's another picture. There's those wire panels. And we built this big structure. Now this was a total experiment. We had no idea how this was gonna work, whether it was gonna fly or not. So we built this structure to create a barrel vault over top. And these are exactly the same panels running lengthwise, there's three panel, I think it's three panels or four panels wide, I think three, one, two, three, I think three panels. And then we just took a chain off the corner and created some tension so that it pulled in and created that barrel vault. And then we used exactly the same netting over top and created this structure that was perfect because it allowed us to create uh, not only hail protection, but provide a structure from which we could hang my uh, my big tomatoes, these are those huge, huge indeterminate tomatoes growing underneath, they're really happy. And I use a bobbin and, and, uh, and uh, clip system. And, uh, and we're able to protect our tall crops. It's super, super, super effective. So here's the three main strategies that we use. Here's another uh, uh, iteration of that. This is also tall crops that are grown under here. This is a separate bed. Um, but we've actually put just a few tall uprights here along the bed and created this kind of scenario. So that allows a lot more ease of movement uh, for accessing your crops without, you know, having to go through wire mesh. So we found this is really great. So these are the three ways. This is the one we use in our main vegetable garden. This is this system here. Uh, now this has a bit more of a barrel vault. We've adjusted this. Um, and then this is the large structure that we're using for our our tall crops. But the nice thing about this large structure is it allows us to grow a number of different crops underneath there, but also have enough room to rotate our crops and move them around a little bit uh, from season to season. So there's a corn growing underneath. Um, and you can see this is a different netting here. We've been trialing different kinds. So this is a blue, uh, a blue bird netting, insect netting. Again, it allows the rain to come through, but the hail will, will uh, bounce off. So we found the blue is not as effective at making the hail bounce off as the white one. Um, it's just not as dense and elastic, but, uh, but it definitely will, will protect our crops from hail. So um, beautiful corn this year. I can see we've got lots of nice ears on there. That was a great year. 